as a company our core thesis is around the fact that when we save on the wastages in the supply chain we are able to pass some of that benefit on to the farmer so that a farmer makes more when they are working with us our proposition to our consumers is that you get better freshness better quality at a reasonable price Hello and welcome to this special conversation between Varun Khurana and me Sarvesh Kanodia. Today Varun and I will be touching upon some very interesting topics around technology, impact, finance, legal and future of OTP. OTP is a startup that operates in the agritech space with the aim to get you fresh fruits and vegetables from farm to your table in less than 12 hours and Varun Khurana is the CEO and co-founder. With that and your permission Varun, let's dive in. Let's do that. Uh, thank you Sarvesh for having me. Uh, hi everyone uh, this is varun i'm the founder and ceo of otp we save at least 10 times in food wastages that the supply chain sees and by virtue of that our proposition to our consumers is that you get better freshness better quality at a reasonable price so that is about us thank you for sharing that let's deep dive into uh, you know the topics Uh, that we'll discuss for today so let's start with technology and uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, you know tech disruptions happen uh, you know across different sectors in agri tech what do you think are the top two tech trends that are paying out that are disrupting the sector see overall technology has been disrupting i would say pretty much all the industries right you talk about you know e-commerce disrupting conventional shopping you talk about cab aggregation disrupting the taxi industry I think agritech has been relatively you know later in the cycle as it has come but having said that if i talk about the farm gate right we are seeing uh, technologies like internet of things uh, to monitor soil health you know we are continuously monitoring pesticide levels in produce hydroponic technology is coming up for artificially growing produce right so i think there are interventions there and then on the front end if i look at it you know there are companies like us who are making sure that produce is reaching consumers in as little time as possible based on uh, ai based prediction that we do and uh, by virtue of that you'll see that the nutrition value of the produce is also much much higher the whole system is end to end traceable because uh, as a consumer we convey to our consumers that look this is where your produce is coming from so I think you know there are interventions happening both at the back end there are interventions happening at the front end but you know we have to realize that look this is you know a decades or a centuries old industry I don't think it's going to happen overnight uh, it is going to take time but you know what we can say for sure is that the process has started so you're organizing what historically was a very fragmented unorganized business uh, and as a result the produce that is available to the customer Uh, is a lot more standardized there's a lot more consistency the quality is a lot better correct, than otherwise correct. which is available to correct them. absolutely absolutely let's let's touch about the regulatory part of the business you know you operate in the agritech sector uh, you know and talk about two regulatory trends that you are seeing that are playing out uh, you know in the sector or and, and talk about if there's a wish list that you have or what you would like to see happen on the regulatory front so see in general when i look at the regulatory environment i think I think the government is very uh, pro and very forward looking when it comes to agriculture I you know I see a lot of uh, government schemes which are designed around like farmer producer organizations putting in subsidies for farmers to um, both for I would say growing better produce as well as I would say post processing you know simple things like sorting grading machines and so on so there is you know good I think there's a good almost 6000 crore budget that the government has put towards developing the fpos farmer producer organizations and there are you know subsidies around again i would say uh, procuring these machines so that what is being shipped to consumers is of fundamentally better quality other than that you know there is also this enam initiative that the government has put up which is to digitize trade of fruits and vegetables so broadly i think see there is a lot of pro initiatives when i look at Uh, the regulatory environment today in terms of what is being grown how it is linked to the market consumer access to it so 
you know my view is that a lot of this is very in line with otp's objectives also and broadly the way i see it is that there is you know fundamentally there are a lot of synergies but then again given that there is a lot of legacy to this industry you know it will take its time so it's not that you know overnight we'll start to see you know things happen i think in general the regulatory environment is is pretty pro development and and pro farm upliftment let's talk about the financial uh, side of things so two things that you've changed you know about how you handle your money in the current market environment yeah that's a i'm you know that's a very apt one to talk about you know in the current scenario so i think um, we have broadly been a very uh, cost conscious company we have really followed the growth at all costs uh, philosophy but i think right now we are uh, the sensitivity is even more so so uh, over the last year you know since this environment has changed you know we are continuously working towards the fact that the company is growing and at the same time we are seeing all of our you know unit economics and cost fall into place so much so that you know over the next financial year you know we are targeting that the company be a bit more positive so that is the general direction uh, you know growing and at the same time making sure that the costs are rationalizing as we grow so that is the general direction that we are taking as a company so both on the top line side on the gross margin side yeah. improve that yeah. and then sort of optimize on the cost as well and correct, get to correct. that sort of ebitda profitability correct absolutely Let, let's talk about impact so two ways that you will scale impact as you think about the future as a company our core thesis is around the fact that when we save on the wastages in the supply chain we are able to pass some of that benefit on to the farmers so that a farmer makes more when they are working with us and we see that also because uh, if i look at some of the farmer groups that are working with us it has been like 4 years 5 years so they've been working with us for a while and um, the other big impact that we do as a company is our reseller network who do our last mile logistics so uh, for them we create an additional earning opportunity where you know they have their day to day business and by working for 2 3 hours additionally in the morning you know they make 15000 20000 rupees as a top up income for themselves now as uh, we are growing our reach in terms of farm builds that we are procuring from is continuously increasing as well so while earlier when serving delhi and cr we were primarily procuring from the nearby belts of haryana rajasthan uttar pradesh now uh, with mumbai coming up we are procuring from maharashtra and we are further i would say getting into deeper states like karnataka madhya pradesh so we are continuously expanding our reach in terms of areas from where we are sourcing and naturally then we are working with more and more farmers and passing on that benefit there as well additionally i would say that um, as the business is growing there are more and more resellers that we are appointing and creating more and more earning opportunities uh, for small and medium businesses so i think by these two things playing out the the scale of the impact is is uh, growing as we are growing and how many farmers would you be working with today see we work with about 20000 plus farmers over the course of the year that is the uh, the scale at which we operate today and where do you see that going over the next few years the 20000 oh i think over the next two years i easily see this number reaching 50000 plus because there are new sources that we are continuously developing and i know that that will require working with you know a newer set of farmers and so on and so forth so yeah for sure so So from an impact perspective what you're talking about as an individual level there's a reseller income increase that's happening correct there's a farmer increase that's happening uh, the scale on the farmer side is obviously massive there are thousands of farmers potentially in a few years it might be even a few lakhs yeah. and then there is a system impact where you're trying to reduce the uh, the wastages that are happening in the food supply correct. chain that we are seeing right now correct it's quite quite significant let's talk about the future uh, and two ways that you think you'll be different in the next two years given all the things that you're doing right now see while i think that you know these things are very hard to predict right because you you think every day as to you know what to do next for us as much as i can think right now uh in terms of the future see you will see us uh go very very deep on some of the you know farmer level initiatives farm sourcing belt so you see a lot of depth 
I think uh, that is going to happen. In terms of the consumer proposition, you will see us providing our consumers with produce which is you know pesticide free and you know heavy metals and you know that concentration will be negligible or no, uh, none at all. Uh, so there is a lot of I would say testing to that effect that you know we are putting in place. You know we want to make sure that when a consumer shops from us, there is comfort that what he or she is eating is safe. So you'll see us work on that. You will see us do further value addition on produce in terms of cut vegetables, etc. So you'll see us play a big role there and you'll see us present in many more markets. So right now it's Delhi and Bombay primarily, but then you will see us in a lot more markets in the times to come. I think that is as much as I can visualize right now, but I can tell you for sure that in our world, we iterate pretty quickly. So it's going to be much more exciting than what I can think of till now. I'm, I'm sure it will be more exciting than we can, uh, we can think of. Thank you, Varun, for sharing your perspectives today. Really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you, Zarvej, for having me. It's a pleasure.